you know, when we started out, there, there wasn't too much modeling. A little bit here and there to just get a sense of, you know, broad alloy uh, compositions and the type of uh, structures you might get. Um, but we mostly started out of just doing like empirical, let's throw a little bit of boron into the alloy and see what type of improvements we get. And honestly, we weren't really getting anywhere too fast. Um, and then, you know, the pandemic forced us to go home. And uh, that's where Chris really enters the picture here. Um, and we, and I'll let you talk about, you know, some of the, the modeling efforts that we were doing. Yeah, so we're able to use uh, commercially available software to try and guess what type of structure the alloy will have. So you can plug in different elements and it'll guess which phases form. It'll estimate the freezing, you know, the melting point. It will, uh, it'll show you where all the different elements are going. So where's carbon, when we add carbon, where's it going in the alloy? You know, which element is it joining up with? So using that, we were able to iterate much more quickly and change a bunch of different compositions. And we were able to uh, come up with a composition that we thought balanced a number of factors and that was our uh, our jump into the GRX810 was an alloy that we thought could be printable, have high strength, oxidation resistance, the nano oxides included. Um, we added some refractory elements for increased pre performance. We added some elements for oxidation improvements. We were able to balance all of that in the uh, in the modeling. So that's how we came to the uh, composition that we chose. And, you know, and to to put an example. Um... You know, the next element that I was going to start throwing into this alloy composition, this alloy development program was molybdenum. It's a very common refractory alloy that improves high temperature properties, usually nickel based super alloys. Um, so I was going to spend a significant amount of time playing around with molybdenum. But the modeling that Chris was performing showed very clearly that any amount of molybdenum in this cobalt, uh, uh, nickel cobalt chrome system would produce phases that would be detrimental to the high temperature properties we were hoping to achieve. And so right off the bat, you know, you know, we were finding results that maybe weren't intuitive to what I was expecting um, and, you know, probably saved us years of development um, um, just by, you know, doing this modeling iteration first. So it's a really nice, I think, you know, proof of concept of how, you know, these modeling tools are mature enough to uh, start to help really inform us as we do new alloy development. 